Out of the four dribble moves you can use in basketball, an in and out, a crossover, a between the legs, or behind the back, Kobe used one of those moves three times in his game where he scored 65. How did he do so? Let's break down every single bucket. And let's start here in the mid range and the mid post. And when Kobe gets this catch, Lamar Odom's gonna slip out, and now Kobe's gonna hezzy, drop that cross. That's the first crossover he uses. And now notice how the defense is stacked up. You have Brandon Roy leading Kobe to the baseline, Zach Randolph sitting on the block. And instead of using a dribble move to create space, Kobe's just gonna pull up out the right hand as a righty and now get that bucket. Just like the last play, Kobe's gonna catch on the right side of the floor. But instead of posting up, he's gonna use the triple threat. And now when he squares up, watch what his defender does. He now backs up because since Kobe squared up, he's now a threat to drive. And what does Kobe do? He pulls up. And although he does miss, remember that concept. The defender backs up once Kobe squares up because he's a threat to drive. And when Kobe gets the switch right here with 10, he's now gonna get into triple threat once again. And now when he faces up, watch his defender. He backs up. So now Kobe pulls up and knocks this one down. 30 seconds later, Kobe's back at the top of the key with a different defender. But even though it's a different defender, if they're gonna give you this much space, why waste your time and use dribble moves? Just get straight into your shot and get your bucket, stay efficient. And now Kobe's hit two threes back to back. Coming down, transition, defender backpedaling, pull up over the top, don't give me another one. Kobe's still human, he just got a brick proof mind. Despite that last air ball, one minute later, Kobe gets right back to the top of the key with the triple threat, but watch his jab this time, right? Such a simple move, but so effective, because when Kobe made that jab, he dropped the level of his body and the level of the ball at the same time. So now the defender really thinks he's actually gonna get to the rim, but in reality, he just created himself space to pull up once again without needing a dribble move. Those last three attacks from the triple threat, that's how easy scoring can be. But sometimes we make things harder than they have to be for ourselves. And so when Kobe attacks here, very similar style like the last one. Gets low, utilizes his jabs, but when he takes one dribble, he creates no angles, no separation or space to get his shot off. But this is where his pump fakes come in so he can bail himself out because you can test late and he shoots over you. Unlike that last play, here's a way you can simplify the triple threat. Look at Kobe's positioning right now. He's a foot or two outside the paint, and then he's gonna go out to the three-point line and make that catch. That now forces Brandon Roy to go and close out to him and close the space between him and the ball. And with that space being there, Kobe just pulls up and he just gets another simple jumper with no dribble moves. Let's talk about attacking the top foot right quick. When Kobe gets this catch, you can see that his left foot is outside the front foot of Travis Outlaw. So that angle told Kobe to attack it and now Outlaw has to open up his base and Kobe stops on a dime and pulls up for that long two. We now have the Houston Rockets head coach, Ime Udoka guarding Kobe at the left elbow. And pay attention to his positioning, his levels. And since he's playing defense this low, in basketball it's impossible to play low and have a hand high enough to contest. So Kobe's gonna take this trigger step and just get over the top because Ime was so low he can't get high and Kobe gets another open shot. 30 seconds later, we got Kobe with Ime on the left side again. So Kobe tells Kwame to get down, Smush is gonna pass that to the wing, go to the corner for spacing, and now this is where the fight for positioning begins. So Kobe's gonna spin out, see if he has that, doesn't have it, and pay attention. Remember the concept we talked about before with facing up? Anytime you face up, the defender backs up. Watch Ime. Kobe faces up, he drops back. Kobe has enough space to once again shoot without the need of a dribble move. Kobe loves this Ime matchup from the left side of the floor. And this time when he gets the catch, he's more towards the middle. But if you look at Kobe's left foot, you can see it's outside of Ime's right foot. So now when Kobe goes, he's automatically gonna open up Ime's base and give himself a lane to the rim. But now look at Odom's defender. When Kobe takes his next dribble, he helps in. And what Kobe now does is get into the body of Ime so he could go to the free throw line instead of trying to shoot through two defenders and does even use a dribble move once again. From half court, you got Ime in denial of Kobe. And the easiest way to exploit a denial is a give and go. And so Smush is gonna pass to Odom. 
Onu hand off to Kobe, and Ime went underneath that handoff, so now Kobe gets an open three on the other side and doesn't even need a dribble. You would think that Ime learned his lesson about going underneath the screen on Kobe, but he hasn't. And so once that pass gets thrown to Odom, he decides to jump the line of the pass and he misses it. So what Kobe does is he steps further to that right to make that closeout even longer and he's able to get that three to go down and they end up going to OT. To start overtime, Kobe has 56 right now, so Portland's gonna have to change their coverage. So as Kobe walks down this right side, he recognizes Jared Jack on that left is ready to double team. So what Kobe's gonna do is attack hard to the right and with the gap he created since Brandon Roy cut him off, he's gonna spin through it and now help defenses late and he gets fouled and goes to the line. Off the triple threat one minute later, Portland is still sending that double team to Kobe. So scoring in isolation is not gonna be a thing for him. So now LA has to take advantage of Portland being in rotation. Kwame, great screen on Aldridge right there. Kobe gets it off the spot up. And off the spot up, he can't get double team. So he attacks the closeout and boom right there, second crossover from Kobe. And now he fades away in the middle, forgets Smush Parker because now Kobe's got 60. We just saw Kobe score 31 points using two crossovers exclusively on the triple threat. Now we're about to see how we use the pick and roll to get the rest of his buckets. And so this is the first time he sees a, a pick and roll action. And it's important that you identify the coverage. And you see that Jamal Magor is ready on the other side to blitz. And so what Kobe ends up doing is giving it to Vujicic on the wing and he breaks that first one. Now second time down, start of the second quarter, he ends up seeing another pick and roll action, gets blitzed once again with Jamal McGlure. And so what does he do? Give the ball up so his teammates can take advantage of the situation, but the defense gets right back squared up, no longer in rotation, and Jordan Farmar ends up traveling. And that right there for Kobe is enough. So he's gonna take matters into his own hands and be aggressive off this blitz. Now Kwame sets the screen, Randolph his defender. Randolph showing on that blitz. But what does Kobe do instead? He attacks that hip of Randolph so he could turn the corner, have a lane to get into the paint, and now is able to get here, stop before he get a charge, and floats that up over the top. Next time down, about a minute or so later, you got Kwame with the step up screen. Randolph didn't have time to get there to blitz. So what does Kobe do? Maintain his dribble, hold his space, find the space, and gets into that fade to get that bucket there again halfway through the fourth. All because Randolph didn't blitz the last time doesn't mean they switched their coverage up entirely. Kobe still has to read what they're gonna do. So Jamal McGlure back right again with that blitz. And what Kobe does, maintain his dribble, stay patient, attack that hip of McGlure so now he has a lane to get to the rim. And even though two's right there at the elbow, he's not set, Kobe bumps, hit over the top, and one right there for Kobe, six points, didn't use a dribble move at all. Just like we seen a couple plays ago with Zach Randolph on how he couldn't get set to blitz. Since Kobe gets this catch and decides to go quick, McGlure doesn't have time to get in position to blitz Kobe. So now Kobe's able to find room against this drop. Ime got hit and he gets that bucket right there from the mid range. With 21 seconds left in the fourth and the Lakers down three, you know who the ball's going to. And Kobe's the inbounder. And what they're gonna do off this inbound is an immediate handoff. And a handoff is just like the pick and roll. He's gonna see a blitz. So what does Kobe do? Attack the hip of Randolph, find space to the three-point line, fades away, knocks it down, and gets them to overtime. With one minute left in overtime, Kobe isn't just gonna get double teamed off the pick and roll. He has 60. So he's also gonna get double teamed in isolation. So Aldridge comes immediately as soon as he catches. He goes through that contact draws a foul. They inbound the ball. And now Kobe ends up running down to this right corner. And as soon as he catches it, he's going to recognize Aldridge coming on that double team. So what does he do? Pure wet into Brandon Roy. Contact. He gets out the picture. Not a dribble move. Gets right back to Aldridge with the spin. And he didn't use a dribble move because he spun and the ball is already picked up. And now he just pulls up over the top. And since he's hot, he gets 63 and doesn't even need another dribble move. Kobe scored 47 points only using the triple threat and pick and roll with two dribble moves, which are two crossovers. Now he's about to get the rest of his points in transition. So as the Lakers get their stops, Kobe's gonna get down quick so he can get some easy buckets. And so here he ends up getting to the post. 
And since Kobe's controlled, doesn't drop his shoulder, the defender flops and he can't get called for a charge, stays persistent on that and gets that too. Now the next time down, right? Kobe off the glass, keeps it for himself. Who is he going to give it up to? <laughs> Keep it real. So now once he gets down, you're going to see Kobe now use his third crossover, but it's purposeful because watch what his defender now does. They open up their base, which is perfect for Kobe's favorite move, which is a dribble pull up right there to the elbow and knocks it down. Two minutes later, Farmar gets the board. Now they're on the break. Kobe run down the right side and watch Kwame because he's the key. Since he runs the rim, now that opens up the middle of the floor. And Kobe now splits to the middle, defender bumps him, hangs in the air, and gets that and one. Now with about seven seconds left in the second quarter, you know Kobe's not going to pass this. And so, so does the entire Trey Blazers team, where you got four defenders moving over to stop Kobe, but none of them are where they need to be, and they're all late, and Kobe now gets right back to the free throw line. Now moving down to the third quarter, there's no better shot you can get than an open three in transition because you ran your lane and the defense hasn't gotten back and matched up. And now the rest of the buckets Kobe had, he first got one off of a steal to start the game, a wide open layup in transition. Second one, he got off a steal from Brandon Roy after jumping the handoff and then getting a clear pass foul. And then got fouled at the very end of the game and got some take free throws. And that right there is the most simplistic 60 piece you will ever see in basketball. 